parasitic nematodes cause disease in corn and occur in every single field that we have in the United States. And so it's important to understand the symptoms that they cause and the types of disease that you might see. And so the severity and the type of symptoms are gonna vary by the nematode. And there's over a dozen different species of nematodes that can cause disease in corn. The symptoms that they cause is going to depend on which species you have out there and it's also common to have multiple species in every field. And so the types of symptoms that you might see in corn above ground might be stunted or yellow plants in the field. Some of those areas might actually be in patches out in the field that are randomly scattered around. You may also observe symptoms on the roots and it's important to look at the roots for clues as to what's going on. Root damage may look like stubby roots or you might see discoloration or dead root tips that can be an indication of some types of nematodes. And so you won't know until you submit a sample whether or not the actual cause of a problem is nematodes. And so here's a few tips to help you collect and submit samples for corn nematode analysis. First of all, collect samples from the root zone. If the field is sandy, it's important that you sample those fields early in the growing season by the fifth leaf stage when the plants are still small. Any other textured field, soil textured field, heavier soils, can be sampled pretty much any time. A convenient time might be to wait until after harvest when you're collecting soil samples for soil analysis for nitrogen and other nutrients. When collecting samples, please place them in sealable plastic bags. Handle them very gently because we need nematodes alive in the laboratory to give you good accurate results. Some laboratories are going to require that you also submit root samples or root balls in addition to the soil. And so be sure to contact the lab that you're going to submit samples to to confirm what type of sample that they would like and whether or not they can receive samples from out of state if you're going to send them from out of state. Also, we want to recommend handling these samples very gently. And so that includes making sure they're not exposed to temperature extremes. These samples cannot be allowed to get hot or too cold, such as freezing, because that'll certainly compromise the quality of the sample. Be sure when sampling to provide at least two cups of soil in the plastic bag and package it very well. Be sure to also mail the sample very quickly, as rapid as you can, and early in the week to prevent it from sitting in a warehouse or in a truck over the, over the weekend. So be sure and contact your local extension office if you need assistance in doing this, and also contact the University Diagnostic Lab if you're going to submit a sample.